The RBMK is the most common type of pressure tube graphite reactor. This is a graphite moderated, light water cooled reactor. It was invented and popularized by the Soviet Union. It has the following advantages. It is a boiling water reactor. It has a better neutron economy than Western light water reactors. It has online refueling capability, and it can be used to produce power and plutonium simultaneously. It also has multiple turbines, each at 500 megawatts electric. The United States also had an RBMK, the Hanford N unit, which operated at 850 megawatts electric from 1966 to 1987. The schematic diagram for RBMKs can be seen here. The graphite blocks themselves are cooled by an 80% helium, 20% nitrogen 2 mixture. The thermal efficiency of RBMKs is approximately 31%. The fuel is low enriched uranium, approximately 2% U-235. The fuel bundles appear similar to the CANDU fuel bundles, except that they are vertically oriented, as can be seen here. Unlike other reactors, flux and power are not required to remain flat in an RBMK. Rather, flux and power may vary from one region to another in the side of the core. RBMKs had a rather complex control rod design prior to the Chernobyl accident. As can be seen in this figure, the top part of the rod was an absorber subrod. Below this was a water portion, and below that was a graphite moderator, and below that was another water portion. The absorber portion of the rod was made up of boron carbide, which has a negative reactivity. However, the graphite portion of the control rod has a positive reactivity. Withdrawing too many of the control rods too far at the same time increases the reactor power, flux, etc., and could cause serious problems. This was the root cause of the Chernobyl accident. The control rods have since been redesigned to always have a negative reactivity. Let's now use the transmutation equations to compute the time at which the peak plutonium-239 production occurs. First, let's make a few simplifying assumptions. Assume that all uranium-238 neutron absorption becomes plutonium-239. The number density of uranium is approximately equal to the number density of uranium-238 since there's only a small amount of uranium-235 in the fresh fuel. Additionally, assume that since the half-life of plutonium-239 is very long, that the decay constant of plutonium-239 with respect to reactor length timescales is zero. For notational convenience, denote U-238 by the subscript U and plutonium-239 by just the subscript P-U. The transmutation equations for this system are thus dNU dT equals negative NU times the absorption cross-section of uranium-238 times the flux and dNPU dT is equal to the number density of uranium times the absorption cross-section times the flux, because all uranium-238 becomes plutonium-239, minus the absorption of plutonium-239, or NPU times sigma of A PU times the flux. The solution to the uranium-238 equation can be seen as being the simple exponential seen here. This implies that the plutonium-239 equation is dNPU dT is equal to NU at time 0 times the absorption cross-section of uranium times the flux times e to the negative sigma A for uranium times the flux times the time minus the number density of plutonium times the absorption cross-section of plutonium times the flux. In order to solve this for the number density of plutonium as a function of time, we need to take the Laplace transform of this equation. Converting to frequency space, we see that S 
times the NPU of S minus NPU at time zero is equal to NU of zero times the sigma uh, A of uranium times the flux divided by S plus sigma A U phi minus the number density of plutonium in frequency space and PU of S times the absorption cross-section of plutonium 239 times the flux. Note that since there is no plutonium in the fresh fuel, N sub PU of zero is equal to zero on the left-hand side of the equation, and thus we see S N sub PU of S equal to the expression N U of zero S times the absorption cross-section of uranium-238 times the flux divided by S plus the absorption cross-section of uranium times the flux minus the number density of plutonium in frequency space times the absorption cross-section of plutonium times the flux. Combining like terms, we can rearrange this expression to S plus sigma APU times the flux multiplied by NPU of S equal to the initial concentration of uranium times the absorption cross-section of uranium times the flux divided by S plus the absorption cross-section of uranium 238 times the flux. We can then solve for NPU of S as being equal to the expression on the right-hand side of the equation. As a side calculation, we can separate the two terms in the denominator on the right-hand side by using partial fractions. We can say that for some values a and b that 1 over s plus the absorption cross-section of uranium-238 times the flux plus s times s plus the absorption cross-section of plutonium times the flux is equal to A divided by S plus the absorption cross-section of uranium times the flux plus B times S plus sigma A for plutonium 239 times the flux. Now let's solve for A by multiplying both sides by the denominator of A, of the A term. Therefore, we see that 1 over S plus sigma A of plutonium times the flux equals A plus B times S plus sigma A of U phi divided by S plus sigma PU phi. Since this expression must be true for all values of S, it necessarily must be true for the specific value of S that is equal to negative sigma A of the uranium-238 times the flux in particular. Evaluating the expression at this point yields 1 over minus sigma APU phi plus sigma AU of phi equals A plus B times 0. And so A is equal to 1 over the absorption cross-section of plutonium times the flux minus the absorption cross-section of uranium times the flux. Similarly, let's solve for B by multiplying both sides of the original partial fraction by the denominator in the B term, S plus sigma A P U of phi. This yields the expression 1 over S plus sigma A U of phi equals A times S plus sigma A P U phi divided by S plus sigma A U phi plus B. Likewise, since this expression must be true for all values of S, it must be value for S in specific where the S is equal to minus sigma A P U of phi. Evaluating the expression at this point yields 1 over minus sigma APU of phi plus sigma AU of phi equals A times 0 plus B. And so, and therefore B equals 1 over sigma AU of phi minus sigma APU of phi, which in fact is equal to minus A. 
And therefore, the total partial fraction is that 1 over s plus sigma a u of phi times s plus sigma a p u of phi is equal to 1 over sigma a p u of phi minus sigma a u of phi multiplied by 1 minus sigma a u of phi minus 1 over sigma a p u of phi. And therefore, the plutonium concentration in the frequency domain is n u at time 0 times sigma a u of phi divided by the absorption cross-section of plutonium times the flux minus the absorption cross-section of uranium times the flux multiplied by 1 over s plus sigma a u of phi minus 1 divided by sigma or s plus sigma a p u of phi. Now let's convert back to the time domain by taking the inverse Laplace transform. Doing so yields NPU of t, since we're back in the time domain, equals NU of 0 times sigma a u of phi divided by sigma a p u of phi minus sigma a u of phi times e to the negative sigma a u of phi t minus the e to the negative sigma a p u of phi times t. Now, the peak plutonium-239 concentration occurs when the time derivative is zero, i.e. at its maximum. So from the original ODE, we can say that dNPU dt equals zero, which is equal to nU of zero times sigma a u phi e to the minus sigma a u phi t minus the NPU of time t, which we just solved for with our inverse Laplace transform, times sigma a p u of phi. Substituting in the expression that we obtained for the NPU of t, we can see the expression here, which is effectively that the losses from plutonium absorption must equal the sources from uranium absorption. This then simplifies down to sigma a p u divided by sigma a p u minus sigma a of u times e to the negative sigma a u phi t minus e to the negative sigma a p u time phi t is equal to e to the negative sigma a u phi t. To find the time of the maximum concentration, which we must solve for t, rearrange this expression such that e to the minus sigma a u phi of t minus e to the minus sigma a p u phi of t is equal to 1 minus sigma a of u divided by sigma a p u times e to the minus sigma a uh, u phi of t. Let's now divide both sides by e to the minus sigma a u phi of t. This yields 1 minus e to the minus sigma a p u phi of t divided by e to the minus sigma a u phi of t is equal to 1 minus sigma a u divided by sigma a p u. And so, the ones on both sides of the expression cancel as do the negative signs. From here, we can take the natural logarithm of both sides as can be seen in this expression. Using log rules, we can say that the natural log of e to the minus sigma a p u phi of t is minus the natural log of e to the minus sigma a u phi of t is equal to the natural log of sigma a u divided by the absorption cross-section of plutonium which because we have an exponential inside of a natural log, we can just reduce this, those two terms on the left-hand side to sigma a u phi of t minus sigma a p u phi of t, which equals the natural log of sigma a u divided by sigma a p u. This implies that the peak plutonium-239 concentration occurs at a time t equal to the natural log of the ratio of the absorption cross-sections of uranium to plutonium divided by 
the absorption cross-section of uranium minus the absorption cross-section of plutonium times the flux.